Welcome back everyone. In this video we're in Medellin, Colombia. In South America. You might be wondering, you guys were in Costa Rica in your last video, so how'd you get there? That's what this video is about. So in our last video we were in Monteverde, Costa Rica and soon after that we crossed into Panama and we stayed about a week, week and a half in Boquete, Panama and it was there we found out that the shipping from Central America to South America was very congested at the moment and there was an opening on a vessel on June 15th. So we made haste from the north of Panama to Panama City to arrange for shipping from Panama to Colombia. Furthermore, after that boat on the 15th of June, there were no vessels scheduled until mid to late July. And so we felt the pressure to get moving and get the vehicle shipped to Colombia before the worst of the rainy season. But there's a lot that needs to happen before we can leave the country. And the one thing that we have to do, like every other border, is get the dog paperwork done. So we had to have a vet check and then go to a government office and get export papers. So that was a little bit of a procedure. And then there's the car. So to get your vehicle out of Panama, you need to go to the DIJ office, which is their federal police, and make sure that the VIN number hasn't been reported in any uh, traffic accidents or traffic violations, anything like that. And uh, so that involves getting up at 5 a.m., going through the rush hour of the city, and then waiting until about noon when it's, uh, the inspection finally happens and uh, it's cleared and stamped everything cool to leave the country. And from there we went to Overland Embassy, which is a small company that helps Overlanders ship from Panama to Colombia, where we met with Alejandro. Yeah, he's a young guy uh, starting his own little business there, helping Overlanders in any way he can. And uh, he gave us a tour of the city a little bit, uh, drove through downtown, checked out all the skyscrapers, and then over to Panama Canal, uh, where we watched a bunch of boats going through the locks and that sort of thing. Big thank you to Alejandro for carting us around today. Took us for an amazing fish taco lunch and meetup, and then gave us a tour of the locks, which I'm sure you just saw some video of. So thank you very much. Thanks for his hospitality. Unfortunately, in our time in Panama, it was raining torrential downpour all the time. So it made our tourism efforts in Panama City a little bit difficult. And while we were at his shop, uh, we got some maintenance done. Uh, Alejandro was able to source me some oil filters and the correct 1540 oil that I was looking for. So we did an oil change there. And uh, also I had the opportunity to track down a pesky oil leak from our transmission uh, where the original PTO power takeoff unit was uh, bolted to our transmission for the crane that we had originally. Uh, back when we were home, we pulled that off and put on a block off plate and that was starting to leak a little bit. But pulling the plate off means dumping all the oil out of the transmission. So I took that opportunity with a shop and supplies and some help to do that there and got it all sealed up good again. But it was about this time that we realized that our temporary vehicle import permit for the car was expiring in a few days. And that corresponded with the date that the boat was scheduled to arrive in Cologne on the east coast of Panama. So we packed up a duffel bag of clothing and stuff each and uh, dropped Kara off at a Airbnb with the dog. And then I took a, a drive from Panama City on the west coast of Panama to uh, Cologne on the east coast. About an hour and a half to drive from one ocean to the other, which is pretty unique, I suppose. And of course, lots of activity in the port, big container ships coming and going and thousands and thousands of containers stacked up, lots of hustle bustle going on there. Now, of course, shipping from Panama to Colombia, you can do it two ways. Uh, there's what's called row row shipping, uh, acronym for roll on, roll off. And that's, as it sounds, you just drive the vehicle onto a big ship and it takes it from point A to point B. 
The other method, of course, is container shipping. And if your vehicle is short enough, below 2.58 meters, you can drive into a shipping container and then uh, containers are loaded onto a container ship. The big difference between uh, Roro and containers, obviously, is that when you put your vehicle in a container and lock it up, you're going to be ensured that it's fairly secure. People can't go trying to break in through your windows or whatever. And with Roro shipping, you need to ensure that your vehicle is secure. So I went ahead and put uh, carriage bolts through both of our doors so that uh, there's no way to open the doors and of course removed everything from the front driving compartment. I also took a big sheet of plywood and a screw jack and jammed that up against our rooftop fan vent because that's the most common point of entry on these vessels because there's only four screws holding it in. And so with that, I had our vehicle all secured up. Now the other difference with shipping row row versus container is when you're scheduled on a boat with row row, you're scheduled on a vessel and with a container you're just in a container and if the boat gets full and it's at its maximum capacity you're just bumped to the next boat which some friends we're traveling with experienced that aspect of it so the procedure is pretty straightforward although it took about three hours to fill out all the necessary paperwork and go through the necessary inspections they of course had to make sure we weren't smuggling anything nefarious. Drug dogs checked everything out and of course there's no problem there. So then we dropped off the keys and I took a taxi back to the west coast to Panama City. Now we had the truck dropped off and we were confident we had a spot on the boat so we purchased our airline tickets from Copa Airlines which is a very pet friendly airline. We just had to go to the office in the mall and tell them that we had a dog coming along with us and they were super friendly about that. And then of course, the day of the flight, we had to go through all the typical uh, airport security and Lincoln handled it like a champ, mm -hmm. patiently waiting through all the lines. Such a trooper. And then finally onto the plane and he just sat by Kara's feet, just like we were driving in the car. So that's what he knows best, waiting till we get to the new adventure. And then of course, arriving in Cartagena, Colombia, uh, having to wait another two hours there in the lines to get through customs and then finally to our Airbnb in Cartagena where we waited for the car. So we arrived at our Airbnb which was very beautiful and economically priced and we booked it for three days because our car was supposed to be here in Colombia in three days. But then the boat was delayed and we ended up waiting a week at that Airbnb. And then we had to wait another week and then we had to move to a different Airbnb. And, and then, then a another third week. Airbnb. <laughs> so we had a lot of time to explore all of Cartagena and walk around, but we ended up waiting for our truck to arrive in Colombia for over a month. So, of course, the month in Cartagena gave us lots of time to explore and walk the streets a bit. Uh, there's an old fort from the 1600s where the trading merchant ships would come in and do their trading stuff and uh, lots of that is still there. So there's an old wall with cannons all the way around it and of course tons and tons of history although this time of year in June and July in Cartagena it is incredibly hot. Mm -hmm. 35 degrees Celsius and 100% humidity for our thin Canadian blood that's not going to work. No. While we were there, we got our yellow fever vaccinations, which are really important to have in South America and also required for entrance in some of these countries. Yep, it was pretty straightforward. We just arrived at the government health office at about 8 a.m. and they're more than happy to help with that. Everything is free in Colombia for healthcare. So we got a free vaccination and a yellow vaccination passport, which we'll need to show at some of these countries coming up to the south. Another thing that we were able to do that we haven't been able to do in a long time is live stream. Thanks to our fiber optic internet in our Airbnbs, we were able to catch up on some live streams, chatting with you guys live, which is always a lot of fun. Uh, if you're one of our channel members, you can click 
the channel member live stream button and go and rewatch those if you're interested. And then one morning I got an Instagram DM from a boat captain who sent me a message with photos of our truck getting loaded onto the shipping vessel. And that was super exciting because that was more information that we, than we were getting from the shipping carrier. So it was really cool to have a man on the ground letting us know that it was coming. He of course was super stoked for us getting our truck and he was super impressed with it as one is. And then uh, it's a, I think 15 or 18 hour voyage only from Panama to Colombia. So the next morning I was able to look out our balcony window and see the ship coming in on the horizon and track it using the marine traffic website which lets you track the GPS position of boats and so we saw it coming in and then of course our GPS trackers came online again once it had cellular coverage and we could see that it was there in the port. And so why did it take so long is probably what you're wondering. It's normal that it should take a week or so, maybe three days at each end for customs and paperwork and bureaucracy. But in our case, there were compounding circumstances that made it take an exceptionally long time. Uh, our first boat in Panama that was supposed to take our car didn't. They were too full and for whatever reason they couldn't take our car. And the replacement boat was only about four days behind that. So it was uh, going to be no problem. And so we patiently waited. But since I had contact with the captain of that boat, I was able to learn that they stopped in Texas for some routine maintenance that was supposed to take days and it ended up taking three weeks. And so they were stuck in Galveston, Texas, uh, getting that work done. And then they thought they had it fixed, went out to sea and then turned around and came back and uh, needed to do some revisions on that. So it was kind of neat learning why the boat was delayed. It was unfortunate. And I think our circumstances were about as dire <laughs> as I've heard anyone's stories. Uh, if you're planning to make this voyage, I don't think it should be so bad for most people. Yeah, we did set out trying to film and document all the steps needed to cross from Panama to Colombia, cross what's known as the Darien's Gap. And uh, I have so much video that we'll never see the light of day because the story changed. I recorded all the video of doing XYZ process and then that wasn't necessary and uh, so many things changed that this would be a long and complicated video that tells a, a boohoo story of our story. But it's not unachievable. Uh, we might write up a website, a uh, blog post on our website, just itemizing the things you need to go through. And finally, after seven days of bureaucracy and paperwork and paying port fees and vehicle insurance and everything needed to get into Colombia, we finally had our vehicle and I was able to go to the port and pick it up. Now, as you can expect, everything in these shipping ports is super secure, armed guards and uh, metal detectors, all, this, all the stuff you'd expect at an airport almost. And uh, then you're in to the port and there's thousands and thousands of brand new cars coming into Colombia, mostly Kias and other Asian uh, cars like that. And at long last, they led me to where they had parked our car. Oh man, that looks like a armor truck. That's what I keep telling you. My security bolts were all intact. And so uh, nothing to do but take it out. Unfortunately, the port staff had left the vehicle ignition on. They've killed the battery. So we need a, a little emergency boosting action, but we got out of the port without any problems. And uh, Kara couldn't come into the port with me, so she was left at the side of the road at a gas station outside of the port, but uh, picked her up, got everything fueled up because you can't have uh, a full tank of fuel. Also, the fuel in Colombia is super cheap. I think it's 54 cents a liter. So yeah, very nice. thankful to have mm -hmm. cheap fuel at this time. So we filled up and then made our way south as quick as we can to get out of the heat. Into the mountains. Take the fourth exit 
And that brings us to where we are now. We are in Medellin and it's gorgeous, about 13 hours from Cartagena and we're at very high elevation and it is cold. <laughs> yeah, about 2,500 meters or 8,200 feet. So 10 degrees at night, which is about 50 Fahrenheit and uh, 20 in the day or 72, 70-ish. So beautiful, beautiful climate mm -hmm. aside from the rain, but that's what you get in the rainforest, I suppose. But today's a beautiful day, which is how we can come out here and catch you guys up. So that's the update. That's what we've been up to for the last month or so. And now we're getting back to doing the things we really enjoy, the travel videos and the tech videos. So look forward to that. And for today's extra content, we're going to give you a little tour of where we're held up here in Pablo Escobar's backyard, Medellin, Colombia. As you can see, some other camping rigs here. This fella just rolled in last night from the Netherlands. Another sprinter-like device from Switzerland. This outfit from Chile. Home-built jobby. There's us and our travel companions, Ellie and Blake from Oregon and we're finishing up just in time because they're starting with the Lamoan. <laughs> Big shout out to our supporting channel members whose names you see here on the right. It's their ongoing support that lets us travel and make these sorts of travel videos. So thank you guys. What's over here? This is the home of the guys who run the campground. And the view, we have to go and to the, the view. And the view at the Mirador. I know this wide angle lens won't do this justice, but nice sitting area up here with this enormous valley, all lit up at night. Very beautiful. So that's going to be it for this time. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for your patience. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. There's the end. Here's some coffee. All over. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. This guy's little coffee plantation here. <laughs>